Hello, this is Dr. Brown. In uh, this video, we're going to go over uh, practice test two. It should cover essentially all of the concepts you'll need for test two. We start out with an object that's dropped from the top of a cliff 625 meters high. And the height above the ground, T seconds after it's dropped, is 625, 625 minus 4.9 t square. We want to determine its speed 10 seconds after the object is dropped. So let's draw a quick picture, say the cliff. It's uh, 625 meters high. And the position T seconds after it's dropped is um, given by S. And S is equal to 625 minus 4.9 T squared. And we want to find its speed 10 seconds after it's dropped. Now the speed is the absolute value of velocity. The velocity is equal to the first derivative of the position, which in this case is just simply minus 9.8 T. So uh, the velocity at 10 is minus 9.8 times 10 is equal to nine, nine, minus 98 uh, meters per second. And so the speed is equal to the absolute value of the velocity is equal to Ninety-eight meters per second. Number two, we have a rectangular steel plate which expands at is as it's heated, and we want to find the rate of change of the area with respect to the temperature T when the width is one point three centimeters and the height length is 2.4 centimeters. If uh, DL DT is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5, and DW DT is minus 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6, uh, round to the to one decimal place. Notice that uh, DL DT, the variable should be capital T to be consistent with the temperature capital T. Uh, DLDT is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5 and DWDT is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6. And we will write a, an equation for the area. And I would just draw a little sketch here. The W being the width and L being the length. The area is equal to the length times the width. And the ADT would be D 
DDT of L times W. Now here we have a product, so we need to use a product rule and the chain rule. So uh, the ADT is going to be L DW DT. That's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second W times DL DT. And now plugging in L uh, is 2.4. And DWDT is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6 plus W is equal to 1.3. And DLDT is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5. And uh, in order to combine these two with the scientific notation, we're going to, uh, first of all, multiply everything out. And we get 21.12 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 1.82 times 10 to the minus five. And we'll rewrite 21.12 to be 2.112 times 10 to the minus five. So both of the terms will be times a number of times 10 to the minus five. And now we can add two numbers here to be 3.932 times 10 to the minus five and rounding off to the nearest tenth, the answer is B, 3.9 times 10 to the minus five. We want to differentiate the function here, f of x, and then find the slope of the tangent line at the given point. The Function f of x is equal to 9x. And I'm going to rewrite this as plus 4x to the minus 1. And the first derivative first derivative is equal to 9 minus 4 x to the minus 2 using the power rule, which is 9 minus 4 over x squared. So the first derivative at a given point is equal to 9 minus 4 over x squared. So the first derivative slope at uh, x equals 7 is equal to 9 minus 4 over 7 squared, which is equal to 
nine minus four over 49 equals 437 over 49, which is answer D. Now, number four, we want to find ds dt, where the function of ts is given as one as t over two t plus five. We're going to need to use the quotient rule. ds dt is equal to the denominator. times the derivative of the numerator, which is one, minus the numerator, which is t, times the derivative of the denominator, which is just two, all divided by the denominator squared, which is two t plus five squared. And well, applying this out, we get 2t plus 5 minus 2t over 2t plus 5 squared. The 2t's cancel out, and we get 5 over 2t plus 5 quantity squared. And that is the answer, which goes right here. Now, we have another function here. We want to find the derivative. One thing we want to do is rewrite these uh, rational functions so that the x is in the numerator. So y is equal to 1 11th x to the minus 2 plus 1 7th x to the minus 1. If you have a fraction, don't be tempted to bring the 11 upstairs. Just leave it exactly where it is. Uh, y prime equals dy dx is minus 2 eleventh x to the minus 3 minus 1 seventh x to the minus 2. And this is the answer, of course, but we're going to change it and put x at the, in the denominator, and that would be x cubed. And this will be 1 over 7 x squared, which looks like it's answer C. Now here we want to find the second derivative. In order to do that, we need to find the first derivative and then take the derivative of the first derivative. y equals one thirteenth x to the minus 2 plus one ninth x to the minus one dy dx equals minus two thirteenths x to the minus three minus one ninth x to the minus two. Since we're gonna to have to take another derivative, we'll leave it in this state. And then after we do the derivative, we'll put um, the uh, power of x to be positive and we'll make everything go to the 
denominator. So the second derivative means we take the derivative of the first derivative, which is going to be 6 thirteenths x to the minus 4 plus 2 ninths x to the minus 3. Now, that would be 6. Thir 6 over 13x to the fourth plus 3, I'm sorry, plus 2 over 9x cubed, which is answer D. Number seven, we want to find the derivative of the product of these uh, two functions. And we're going to use the product rule. The first thing to do is to write it slightly differently as x to the minus 2. This will help us do the differentiation. x to the minus 2 plus 6 times x squared minus x to the minus 2 plus 6. And now we're going to use the product rule and get y prime equals the first, which is x to the minus 2 plus 6 times the derivative of the second, which is 2x plus 2x to the minus 3. Derivative 6 is 0. And then uh, we're going to have the second, which is x squared minus x to the minus 2 plus 6 times the derivative of the first, which is minus 2x to the minus 3. Now we're going to have to FOIL this out. This times this, using FOIL, we get the first is 2x to the minus 1. The outside is plus 2x to the minus 5. The inside is 12x. And the last is 12x to the minus 3. And the last term here is minus 2x to the minus 1 plus 2x to the minus 5 minus 12x to the minus 3. Now we need to simplify things and realize that 2x to the minus 1 and minus 2x to the minus 1 cancel out. We get to add 2x to the minus 5 and 2x to the minus 5. So we get 4x to the minus 5 plus the 12x. And notice 12x to the minus 3 minus 12x to the minus 3 cancel out. And we can now rewrite the answer as 4 over x to the fifth plus 12x. And so the answer is D. Number 8 is also going to require a little bit of uh, calculation and simplification. 
We want to find the derivative of this function and this function is a quotient of uh, two quadratics. So we're going to use the quotient rule for g prime of x is going to be the denominator x squared plus 6x times the derivative of the numerator, which is 2x, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x plus 6, all divided by the denominator squared. And now to simplify this, we multiply this out and we get 2x cubed plus 12x squared. We'll need to FOIL this and we get minus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 10x plus 30. And now for the denominator, I'm going to uh, take an x out of what squared here to have x times x plus 6x and that square that and so we'll have x square times x plus 6 quantity squared and now we need to further simplify and we get 2x cubed plus 12x cubed uh, 12x squared minus 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 10x minus 30 over x squared times x plus 6 squared. And notice we get cancellation of 2x cubed and we get 6x squared minus 6x squared which is 6x squared and we're left with minus 10x minus 30. Divided by x squared times x plus 6 quantity squared and that is answer A. Problem nine, we want to find the derivative. And again, we need to rewrite this Y as the eighth root is like the one eighth power. So we write this as x to the seven eighths. Now we have x to a power. Then we write plus x to the seven e. Notice that e is just a constant. So this is just x to a power. So using the power rule, it's seven eighths x to the seven eighths minus eight eighths. That's minus one um, plus seven e x to the seven e minus one, and we get seven eighths x to the minus one eighth 
uh, plus 7e, x to the 7e minus 1. And that is answer C. Number 10, a ball is dropped from the top of a building. And this building, after the ball is dropped, the position is given by S equal 256 minus 16 T squared. Notice that T equals zero. The position is 256, which means the height of the building is 256. Now, we want to find out how long does it take the ball to reach the ground and what its velocity is at the moment of impact. Well, it's on the ground when S equals zero. So we're going to set X, uh, S equals zero and solve for T and we get 16 T squared equal 256. T squared is equal to 16 and T equal four. So it takes four seconds to reach the ground. And now we want to calculate the velocity. Velocity is the first derivative of S is equal to minus 32T. So the velocity at four seconds is minus 32 times four equals minus 128 meters per second. So the answer to the entire question is four seconds to reach the ground and it's going at a speed of minus 128 meters per second when it hits. Number 11. Car is traveling at 60 feet per second. Suddenly applies the brakes. After that, the position of the car is given as 60T minus 3T squared. T seconds after the driver applies the brakes. How far does the car go before coming to a stop? It stops when velocity is equal to zero. So we need to calculate the velocity is equal to S prime equal to 60 minus 6t. And that is equal to zero when 6t equals 60 and t equal to 10. So it's going to position at 10 seconds will be how far it goes after the brakes are applied. So we need to calculate the position at 10 seconds, which is 60 times 10 minus three times 10 squared, which is 100. And this is equal to 300 feet. Number 12, we've got a cube and each edge of the cube X uh, decreases at the rate of uh, two uh, meters per minute. 
And when x equal 2, at what rate is a cube's surface area changing? And x equal 2, at what rate does a cube's volume change? So let's draw a quick diagram of this cube. Each edge of the cube is x. And the cube has six sides. So the area surface area of the cube, which I'll denote by A, is going to be six times the area of one side, which is x squared. And the volume of the cube is just going to be x cubed. So the dA dt, the derivative of the area with respect to time, it's going to be ddt of 6x squared. So we first take the derivative with respect to x, which is 12x, and multiply times dx dt. So dA dt for x equal 2 is 12 times 2 times dx dt is minus 2. Notice that the uh, edge is decreasing at 2 meters per minute. So we get minus 48 meters squared per minute. Now to do the change in volume with respect to time dv dt is equal to ddt of x cubed, which is equal to take the derivative with respect to x first, 3x squared times dx dt. And dv dt at x equal 2 is going to be 3 times 2 squared, which is 4 times dx dt, which is minus 2. And so this is going to be minus 24 meters squared per minute. So the answers here are minus 48 and minus 24. Problem 13, we want to find the derivative of this function, which is uh, trigonometric and uh, would also t to the fifth and 14t and uh, a 14 constant in it. We need to calculate the derivative and so we will write this down as s prime is equal to ddt of t to the fifth cosine of t minus ddt of 14t sine of t minus ddt of 14 cosine of t. So we'll now, we'll use uh, the product rule. And 
S prime will equal the first times the derivative of the second, which is minus sine of t, plus the second, which is cosine of t, times the derivative of the first, which is 5t to the fourth. And for the second term here, we've got minus 14t, which is the first part of that, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of t. minus the second, which is sine of t, times the derivative of the first, which is 14. Then finally, minus the derivative of 14 cosine of t, which is uh, going to be plus 14 sine of t. So, writing this out, we get S prime is equal to minus T to the fifth sine of T plus 5T to the fourth cosine of T minus 14T cosine of T. Uh, and notice we have minus sine minus 14 sine of t plus 14 sine of t, which is, which cancel out. And so the answer is this, which is answer B. All right, number 14 is to find uh, dy dx for the following function, which is a quotient. Uh, we're going to use the quotient rule. dy dx is equal to the denominator, which is 1 minus sine of x. Times the derivative of the numerator, which is minus 9 sine of x. Minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is minus cosine of x, all divided by the denominator squared, which is one minus sine of x quantity squared. Now we need to multiply this out and we get minus nine sine of x plus nine sine squared of x plus nine cosine squared of x all divided by one minus sine of x. Squared. Notice to further simplify this, we get minus 9 sine of x plus 9 factor of 9 out. We get 9 times sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x divided by 1 minus sine of x quantity squared. Notice that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we get 9 minus 9 sine of x divided by 1 minus sine of x squared. Factoring 9 out, we get 9 times 1 minus 
Sonavax, divided by one minus Sonavax, quantity squared, we can cancel out one of the one minus sign of X, which appears in the numerator and the denominator. And we get nine over one minus sign of X as the answer. So here you have to remember some of your trig identities. Here we're given a composite function, y equal f of u and u equal g of x, and we want to find dy dx. Now, using the chain rule, we know that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx, that's the chain rule. And dy du equal cosine of u. du dx is equal to minus sine of x. So dy dx equals dy du, which is cosine of u, which is cosine of cosine of x, because u is equal to cosine of x times du dx, which is minus sine of x. So the answer is minus cosine or cosine of x times sine of x, which is b. Now we could have gone ahead and written this as y equals sine of u, which is y equals sine or cosine of x, and then applied the chain rule directly and say, dy dx is equal to ddx of sine of cosine of x. We know the derivative of the sine is cosine, but it's not cosine of x, it's cosine of cosine of x. And the embedded function, uh, we have to take the derivative of cosine of x which is a chain rule, which is going to be cosine of x, cosine of cosine of x times minus sine of x, which is exactly what we got. You can use the intermediate step of, of uh, defining u and then use the chain rule in general or do it directly. And number 16, there's another chain rule problem. And let's go ahead and use the intermediate. Let, it, let uh, y equal f of u and u equal g of x. In this case, u is equal to G of x uh, you would be equal to cotangent of x. So y is equal to cosecant of u. And we want to calculate uh, dy dx dy dx 
is equal to dy du times du dx. And notice that y is equal to cosecant of u, where u is equal to cotangent of x. So this is dy du is the derivative of cosecant of u, which is equal to minus cosecant of u times cotangent of u. And du dx is the derivative of cotangent of x, which is minus cosecant squared of x. And now we need to replace u with what it is, which is cotangent of, of x, and we get minus cosecant of u, which is cotangent of x, times cotangent of u, which is cotangent of cotangent of x, times minus cosecant squared of x. Notice that the part of the two negatives cancels out and we get plus cosecant of cotangent of x times cotangent of cotangent of x times cosecant square root of x, which is answer A. Okay, number 17, we want to use implicit differentiation to find dy dx. And we have this relation between x and y given here. So we want to find dy dx. We're going to take d dx of xy plus d dx of x plus d dx of y equals d dx of x squared y squared. So look at here, we're going to have to use the product rule and then the chain rule. And so let's go ahead and complete this. d dx of x y is equal to using the product rule, the first, times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first. The first is x, so its derivative is 1. Plus d dx of x, which is 1, plus dy dx. equals the derivative with respect to x of x squared y squared. So we have a product here, x squared times y squared, which is first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of y squared is going to be 2y times dy dx. Don't forget this because that's the chain rule. And then plus y squared times derivative of the first, which is 2x. So now I'm going to collect all the dy dx terms, which I'm underlining here. 
and I'm going to factor dy dx. And I will then have x factoring dy dx out of this term, we get 1. Taking this to the other side and factoring dy dx out, we get minus 2 x squared y equals two x square two x y squared which will stay on this side and we will have to bring the y over and the one over and now we calculate dy dx is equal to two x y squared minus y minus one, all divided uh, by this term. And I'm going to rewrite the order and start with minus two X square Y plus X plus one. And this turns out to be answer D. Number 18, we have um, the derivative of a logarithm times uh, a fourth order. So we're going to have to use the uh, part rule Derivative of x fourth times ln of x is going to be the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x plus ln of x, which is the second times the derivative of the first, which is 4x cubed. And then the derivative of minus one third x cubed is going to be minus x squared. So rewriting this, we get x cubed plus four x cubed ln of x minus x squared which is answer A. Number 19, find derivative Y with respect to X. You can see we're gonna to have to take the derivative of the inverse sign but we also, it's not just simply inverse sine of x, it's inverse sine of u. So we're going to temporarily rewrite this as y equal minus inverse sine of u, where u equals 11x squared plus 4. So dy du. Our dy dx is what we're looking for is equal to dy du times du dx. dy du is equal to minus one over the square root of one minus u squared. du dx is equal to 22x so we have minus 22x times the square root of one 
minus u squared. Now u, remember, is 11x squared plus 4. So the answer is minus 22x over the square root of 1 minus quantity 11x squared plus 4 squared, which looks like answer B. We have number 20, water is being discharged from a pipeline at a velocity given by this formula. P is a pressure in PSI. And the water pressure is changing at a rate of 0.178 PSI per second. Find the acceleration dVdt of the water when P is equal to 37. So we want dVdt equals dV dP times dP dt. So dV dp is one half times 19.10 p to the minus one half times dp dt is given as 0.178. So we're going to multiply by 0.178. This is equal to 1910 over 2 square roots of p times 0.178. And we want to do this when p is equal to 37. So the answer is 1910 over 2 square roots of 37 times 0.178. Multiply this out in your calculator and you get 27.946 feet per second squared. Answer is A. We're given the kinetic energy K of an object with mass M and velocity V is given by this equation. How is dm dt related to dv dt if K is a constant? Well, I'm going to go ahead and write down k equal one half mv squared. To get the relationship, we're going to take the derivative with respect to t of both sides. But I'm going to first multiply both sides by 2. And I get 2k equal mv squared. And now I want to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. And first of all, dt of 2k, since k is a constant, is zero. Now I've got a product, mv squared, m and v are both variables. So it's first times ddt of v squared plus the second, which is v squared, times ddt of m. ddt of v squared is going to be m times 2v times dv dt. 
take the derivative with respect to V and then do multiply by dV dt, which is the chain rule. And then finally, the second one is V squared dm dt equals zero. And uh, I'm going to take this over to the right side and we get V squared dm dt is equal to minus two m dv dt. And now dm dt is going to be minus two m V over V squared dV dt. Then we can cancel the V, we get minus 2m over V dV dt. So this is the answer, which is answer C. Number 22, we have a function S equal to F of T, gives the position of a body moving uh, on a coordinate line. S is in meters and T is in seconds. Find the body speed and acceleration at the end of the time interval. The end of the time interval is T equal four. Notice we want to have do speed, so that's going to be the absolute value of velocity. So the velocity is equal to S prime, which is equal to minus three T squared. Plus eight T minus four. So the velocity at four is equal to minus three times four squared plus eight times four minus four equals minus 48 plus 32 minus four equal minus 20 meters per second. So the speed is absolute value minus 20, which is equals 20. And the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity which is minus 6t plus 8. So the acceleration at the end of the interval, which is 4 seconds, is minus 24 plus 8 equal minus 16. So the answer is 20 and minus 16, which is answer A. Number 23, have an electrical system governed by Ohm's law, which states that the uh, voltage is equal to the IR, where I is the current, and R is the resistance. Uh, and it says the current in the electrical system is decreasing at a rate of eight amps per second. So that means the current di dt is equal to minus eight. 
while the voltage remains constant at 10 volts, at what rate is the resistance increasing in ohms per second when the current is 28 amps, or when the current is 28 amps? So we have the relationship that V is equal to IR and V is constant. So to get a relationship between the variables, we need to take DDT of both sides. So DDT of V equal DDT of IR. DDT of V, which is a constant, is zero. DDT of IR is equal to I dr DT. That's the product rule plus R di dt, and that is zero. So now we need to plug in uh, the current I is 28. So we get 28. Uh, dr dt, which is what we want to find, plus r times di dt, which is minus 8. Now notice to get r, we need to use the fact that v is equal to i times r. And we're doing this at the point where the voltage is 10 and the current is 28. So R is equal to 10 over 28. So our answer is 28 dr dt plus R, which is 10 over 28, times minus 8 equals 0. So 28 dr dt equals 80 over 28. And dr dt is equal to 80 over 28 times 28. which can be reduced to 5 over 49. So the answer is B. Number 24, we want to graph the derivative of the function, which is graphed at the right. Notice that we want to take the derivative of y here. Uh, we don't have any numbers, but we can get, figure out which one of these is the real derivative by just looking at what the uh, slope of the tangent line would look like. like. At x equals 0, the slope is 0. On the right here, the slope is negative and it starts off at a, at a, uh, a low negative and becomes even more negative. So it would go down like this. On the left side, the slope is negative. And it will go down like this and get even more negative. So it looks like the derivative of that function is an inverted parabola, which is answer A. OK, number 25, we want to graph the derivative of the function at the right. 
looks like uh, a sinusoidal wave. Let's look at the points where the derivative is zero. Which would be here, here, and here. And between here and here, the derivative is negative. And here, the derivative is positive. And it's positive in this area. So, looks like the only one it could be is answer D, which is a uh, negative cosine wave. Number 26, we have a formula for inventory management says that the average weekly cost of ordering and paying for and holding merchandise is A of Q, where A is the average cost and it's KM over Q plus CM plus HQ over two. Q is a quantity ordered when things run low. And uh, M is the number of items uh, sold each week, which is a constant. And H is a weekly holding cost per item. And it asks us to find the ADQ. And the second derivative of A with respect to Q. So A of Q equals KM. And I'm going to rewrite that as Q to the minus one. plus CM plus HQ over two. Notice Q is a variable, M is constant, and K is constant. So DA, DQ is equal minus KM Q to the minus two. Derivative of CM is zero, and derivative of H over two times Q is just H over two. So that can be written as minus KM over Q squared. Plus H over two. So this will be H over two minus KM over Q squared. Now taking the second derivative of A with respect to Q, we get two KM Q to the minus three. The derivative of H over two is zero. So the answer is two KM over Q cubed. And finally, the last problem is a related rate problem where we have a stage and an actor who's six foot tall. The 
actor is running towards the front of the stage towards a spotlight. And of course, he will have a shadow on the back of the stage, which we'll call V. His distance from the front of the stage is X. And he's walking towards the front at a speed of three feet per second. And we can write down that dx dt is equal to minus three. And we want to find out how fast the length of a shadow, which is why is increasing when the actor is 10 feet from the front. So we want to find dy dt when x is equal to 10. And uh, that's now right a relationship between y and x. Notice that uh, we have two similar triangles. Here is the first triangle, and then the larger triangle. And because there are similar triangles, the height of the larger triangle, y, relationship between that and the height of the smaller triangle is equal to the ratio of uh, the base of the larger triangle divided by the base of the smaller triangle. So we get y over 6. equal 40 over x. You could also say that y over 40, which is the tangent of that angle, is also equal to the tangent of 6 over x. And either way, you're going to get xy equal 240. So solving for the height of the shadow, we get y equal 240 over x. And we want dy dt. So dy dt is equal to the derivative with respect to x, which is minus 240 over x squared times dx dt the chain rule. And plugging in dy dt uh, for x equal to 10 and dx dt uh, is minus 3. We get minus 240 over x squared, which is 100, times dy d, uh, dx dt, which is minus 3. And then we will find that this is equal to 7.2 feet per second. So the answer is 7.2 feet per second. And that is review for test two.